Hello, I'm David Knox. Welcome to Knox First Tuesday number 26. Today's topic is creating unique selling propositions. This seminar will help agents with no writing skills to structure powerful targeted sales copy that will entice prospects to engage your services. That was a unique selling proposition and you're going to be able to write them just like that at the end of this seminar. So the objectives of today's seminar are number one, identify your primary customer. Number two, identify your unique selling propositions. What makes you different? What makes you better? And number three, how to write and structure USPs. The support materials for today's session are number one, KFT outline on this session, and number two, KFT worksheet. And that'll be the thing that really helps you because the worksheet, I'll give you sample unique selling propositions, and I'll give you a four column table that will help you structure, and I'll give you sample text for all four of them. So that'll be a great worksheet to help you write these. Now, as always, we have support material that ties in with this, and I would say the related video today would be RL04-2, Real Marketing Steps number one through four, and the supporting PDF, Need Feature Benefit Training Tool, because that relates to features and benefits, which ties into this. So if you're ready, I'd like to begin by telling you my inspiration for this. I attended an internet marketing conference recently, and one of the sessions was given by a guy named John Carlton. I found I, I liked this guy. He was a real kick. In fact, at the end, I bought his uh, seminar DVDs, and I've been taking his course, and that's where I learned a lot of this. So I just want to share with you www.john-carlton.com. So if you would like to learn more about copywriting, I recommend the guy. It's a, it's a great source. So let's talk about what is a USP? What is a unique selling proposition? Number one, it is a statement of how a customer benefits from using your service. You notice I didn't say about you. Too much real estate advertising has been ego advertising. Oh, look at me. I'm so good. Oh, gosh, just take a look at how many homes I've sold. Oh, I'm so good. And it's not about that. A unique selling proposition is about the customer. What does the customer gain? Number two, a USP differentiates yourself from your competition. And that is critical today, especially if your fees are different. And if you're competing against somebody else, you need to define the difference. And finally, you've probably heard the term lately, elevator speech. Well, now I'll share with you what that means. An elevator speech was kind of the generic term for how do you tell someone who you are and what you do on a quick ride up the elevator? You've got a few seconds. So this is basically the structure of an elevator speech. How do you use USPs? What's the point of these? Well, they're great. Number one, in conversation. When you're talking with somebody, you've got just a couple of seconds in a store or an open house, you tell somebody what you do. This happens on airplanes with me. I'll sit down next to somebody and they say, what do you do? <laughs> they don't want me to open up a laptop and take them through the whole thing. They want a, a quick sentence about it. And I'll say, I help real estate agents improve their productivity so they increase their income and get co paid commensurate with that higher value. Just down and dirty, right like that. That's all it has to be. Uh, the other time to use USPs, absolutely, is on your website. Clearly, you'll use them in marketing, advertising, and headlines. I think on your email signatures, you ought to have a little USP across the bottom. And those of you who are blogging, it's another great place to use USPs. So now let's take a look at the USP. First of all, the USP is not what you sell. It's not the product, it's not the service, it's not the feature, it's not what the thing is depending on what that is, is. Uh, it is what it does for the seller. It takes you out of the product focus and into the benefit focus. It also points out how are you different. If you go to a store, and I've said this at a couple of other um, commission seminars, you go to a store, you take a look at two products and one costs more than the other. One service costs more than the other. They seem to be pretty identical, but you go, well, What's your first question? You ask, what's the difference? So a unique selling proposition defines your difference. And that's how you get paid more and that's how you get the business. And finally, it's a way to position yourself uniquely in your market. Oh man, is that ever important today. There's just so much out there that you've got to find a way to stand out. So now the, here's the good news of USPs. There is a nice, simple structure for doing this. And what I'm going to do now is take you through this structure give you some samples of what I've done, and then I'm gonna lead you through the process of identifying each of these four columns. Basically, a USP says, we help this group do this better than that, even though this is the challenge. 
So this group, you define your target audience. I help this group. For me, I help residential real estate agents. I help consumers. I help managers and trainers. So I have three different groups, three different products to sell. I help them do this. So the question is, what goal do we help them accomplish? What outcome? What benefit? So I help this group do this better than, because as people take a look at the pluses and minuses of two different companies, I help them do this better than the competition or other options. And finally, and this is kind of inter interesting, a USP acknowledges the challenge. So I help this group do this better than that, even though this is their challenge. So for a real estate example, I might say, I help distressed sellers divulge or dispose of their property better than going through a foreclosure even though they have no income and no equity, et cetera. So we define the outcome and we relate to the fact that these are the challenges they're facing. And we'll get more specific in a minute. Now, after I took this course, I did what I want you to do, and that is I did my homework. I'll share it with you. If you don't like this, you can fast forward it. Uh, but the, one of the ones I wrote was, David Knox helps market-beaten real estate agents recapture the enthusiasm and motivation of their first days in the business by reminding them of the fun that can be had with any prospect and having them treated as a game, even though they've been discouraged by a ridiculously challenging market. So that's one. Uh, for managers and trainers, I might say, I help managers get their agents back to basics and in the field again through role play demonstrations and entertaining presentations, even though the agents have lost faith in the market. So I don't need to go through the other ones, but those were my initial USPs. So now it's time to do yours. So are you ready? In the second half of this video, what I'm going to do, and you need to take some notes here, is to help you define each of these four columns.